Hello, hello, and welcome to my thought on this Thursday. And this is Thursday. Yesterday was Wednesday uh, when I was telling you about Thursday. But today is Thursday and a very lovely day. Uh, and I was thinking a lot about uh, the people we pay attention to because we think they're smart. And we tend to think that people who have gone to Oxford and Cambridge and in America, Harvard and Princeton and Stanford um, are, are smart, that are smarter than the rest of the people. And the graduates from those kinds of schools, the Ivy League schools, the major schools, uh, Edinburgh University here, um, University of Michigan, uh, Berkeley, we have formed what I call the intellectual elite. And I believe that the sense of superiority and the sense of entitlement and the sense of righteousness that the intellectual elite has is a, a, causing an awful lot of the trouble uh, and the swing to the conservative right. But that's my opinion. One of the things that I do think is that we don't realize how, how academic smarts are not necessarily the smarts that get you through life. And I want to tell you about my friend Kay Dart. My friend, because my friend Kay Dart is the smartest, wisest woman I have ever met. My friend Kay Dart uh, is from Oregon, Ohio. And I met her in, God, when was it? It was 19, late 1960s, when I moved to Oregon, Ohio. And I do not believe that my friend Kate, uh, I'm not sure, I know she finished grade school, and I know she went to school until she had to, so she would have gone to school until she was 15. But I do not believe she finished uh, high school in America. Um, when she was 16, she had a baby, and when her mother found out that she, and the husband was Tom, was his name, I remember very clearly uh, this story, and when the mother, or Kay's mother, found out she was pregnant, remember Kay was 16, she threw her out of the house. Kay, I don't know where she lived then, she was not specific to me, but she had her baby, who was named Tammy, she had her baby on her girlfriend's couch. Uh, I am trying to imagine the terror and the fright of a 16-year-old child who had absolutely no idea what birth was about, uh, giving birth with her helper being her girlfriend on her on the couch. I, I don't even want to think about that. But that's what she did. The next day, when the girlfriend's mother discovered what had happened, she was horrified, and she threw Kate out and said, "You, Kay, and she said, you can't stay here. So Kay took her baby, and I want you all to think how you would survive this when you were 16 years old. And, and this is in Toledo, Ohio, where the weather is disgusting. Uh, it's, uh, I have no idea when Tammy was born. I'm guessing it would have been in the fall. I don't know. Uh, she never really told me, but I know the weather was not that bad. So it would have been summer or fall. And um, she lived on a park bench. And I said to her, how did you eat? She said, I stole food from dumpsters. And I said, oh, my God, because, you know, I'm the kind that likes my likes my food very well packaged and immaculate and um, with a price tag on it. And she stole it from dumpsters. And I said, how did you dress the baby? She said, I stole clothes from Kmart. And I was appalled. I thought, oh, my God, how could you do it? And then she said to me, I saw children on TV that wore beautiful clothes. And I thought, why can't my baby wear beautiful clothes too? And of course, my answer is, those people worked for their money. Uh, you didn't. But I wasn't that sure. And I know that I, if I had a baby, I would have made sure that my baby was protected from the elements. And if I had to steal to do it, I'm quite sure I would have done it. So I found out about this uh, much later, but what happened is uh, she sat on that park bench for some time. She never told me how long, 
but I'm guessing it was a couple months. And every day, a young man, whose name was Paul, came and sat next to her on, and played with the baby. He was a private garbage collector, very dedicated to his work. He had private customers, and he collected their garbage and their rubbish in a, a, a truck uh, that stunk to high heaven. Anyway, and he uh, fell in love with the baby, with Tammy. And one day he said to her, to Kay, I'll walk you home. And she said, this is my home. And he said, you can't bring up a baby on a park bench. I'm marrying you. And that is the story of Kay's romance. And when I met her, she was married to Paul, and they lived in the mobile home next, next to mine. Uh, most of you know who have been following me that I spent uh, several months in the hospital. And when I came out, uh, I've always tried to get a job in a newspaper. And at this point, I was trying, Oregon, Ohio was right outside of Toledo. I was trying to get a job in the, at the Toledo Blade. And I felt I had the proper credentials. The photographer, that uh, I did get a chance to do freelance writing for the magazine section with a, uh, an editor whose name was Mike Tressler. And he assigned a photographer whose name was Tom Riley. Tom Riley was a drunken Irishman. And I had just gotten out of the hospital. Um, I was pretty much uh, fighting death. Uh, the hospital had told me I was going to die, and I was fighting uh, not to. So I was not in uh, any kind of shape to uh, handle uh, anybody that was uh, flirtatious or was uh, coming on to me. In the first place, I, I could never understand why. I looked like a ghost. But... I just simply did not have it in me. Every ounce of me was fighting to survive. So I really wanted uh, to get on with Tom Riley when he came to, to uh, photograph uh, me and, and my subjects for my, my articles because I wanted the Toledo Blade to hire me. However, he was making passes at me, and he was, in my mind, not my type. And I frankly think at that point in my life, no one was my type, but he was definitely not my type. And he was coming over, and he had been very touchy-feely the last time he was there, and he was coming over to take uh, photographs for an article that I had gotten into Workbench magazine. And, uh, and he wasn't charging me anything because he was thinking he was going to get a little something on the side. And I told Kay about this, and I said... I didn't want to offend Tom Riley because he is the main photographer for the pictorial magazine at the Toledo Blade, and I want to get more articles in the in the in the paper in the magazine section, and I want to um, I don't want to do anything to make anyone angry at me. I just don't want to, and I didn't know how to handle it. And Kay said to me, "Leave it to me." I said, "You know what you're going to do." And I said, and, and so the next day, she said to me, what time is he coming over? So I said, he's coming over at three. So at three o'clock, Tom Riley came, and this is back in the 60s, with a whole load of, of photographic equipment, a camera, a tripod, lights, the whole thing. He came in my door. At 3.01, someone knocked on my door. I opened the door. And Kay had a little girl. She was maybe four. Her name was Michelle. And she was she had a sucker. She was licking a sucker. And she just said, hello, Aunt Lynn, and walked in the house and stood behind Tom, Tom Riley. I said nothing. We went on with our, our, our assignment. And wherever we went and whatever we did, that little four-year-old was right behind Tom. She was right there. And at the end of the session, Tom thanked me, and I thanked him, and he left. And I said to Michelle, I said, what did your mother tell you? And she said, my mother told me not to go, not to leave, not to let that man walk anywhere without me right behind him. And, of course, that took care of any ideas that Tom Riley had. I had at that point three advanced degrees plus uh, advanced study in Indiana University. Uh, I, I was exceptionally educated. And I assure you that I never, ever would have thought 
of a thing like that. Um, so, so, so that's saying something for street smarts, and it's also saying something for people that is telling you that a college education, an academic education, does not necessarily prepare you for life. Kay Dart, who had her baby on, in, in, her, in her girlfriend's house and lived on a park bench until she married a garbage collector, who married her only because of the baby. And she was smart enough to know that her future was there. And I need it with, with Paul. And she was smart enough to know that how to, to turn, uh, turn away from somebody who was coming on to you without offending them. Uh, that's something for you to think about. And I'm giving you that today on Thursday for my thought. Thank you so much for joining me.